Okay, did you see that? Yesterday, Gnosis went live with their GNO token launch and raised $12.5 million in 10 minutes in a crowd sale that can only be described as a complete fiasco. And I'm going to break it down right now. So Gnosis is a prediction market platform, which has been in the works for over two years now and will allegedly enable any application developer to build custom prediction markets on top of Gnosis's liquidity market. And I say allegedly because the platform is not actually in production yet. And the big idea here is that prediction markets are immensely valuable tools for forecasting and have been you know, popular in academic circles for a while, but they've never actually seen mainstream adoption because they've been stifled by regulations whenever they've tried to launch them. But now, with the unregulated nature of cryptocurrencies, you can actually create large-scale prediction markets and really crank them up to the limit and see what happens and if crowdsourced wisdom is actually valuable. And the way that you place bets on the Gnosis platform require the use of GNO tokens, of which a portion were going to be sold to the general public in a crowd sale yesterday. But the mechanism that Gnosis used to perform this crowd sale went off the rails a little bit. So prior to the Gnosis crowd sale, the way that all of these kind of ERC-20 token on top of Ethereum crowd sales have been working was using this kind of early bird discount model. And the way that this would work is say you have 10 million tokens that your company is trying to, crowd, to, to sell in a crowd sale. Well, you would split it into two separate groups, one a group of 5 million tokens, another group of 5 million tokens, and basically say that if you buy in the first 5 million tokens, they're only going to cost one Ether per token. But if you buy in the second group, it's going to cost two Ether per token. So if you only had 50 Ether to invest and you wanted to invest in this company, you would have an economic incentive to buy early because you would buy 50 tokens if you bought in the first 5 million tokens that were sold, and you'd only buy 25 tokens with your 50 Ether if you bought later. And because all the tokens are gonna end up being worth the same amount, there's an economic incentive to own more of them, right? So, I mean, I, I don't understand why people are so keen to even invest in products that haven't launched. That, to me, is insane. But for some reason, this kind of market dynamic led people to just have a market frenzy whenever anybody tried to sell ERC-20 tokens. And the, the sale would just end in 10 minutes because everyone was trying to get in really quickly into that first group. So in an attempt to mitigate this kind of feeding frenzy, Gnosis decided that they were going to perform a token sale using something called the Dutch auction model. And the idea goes like this. Gnosis minted 10 million GNO tokens. And they were going to sell some portion of those GNO tokens in a public crowd sale. But the exact number was not known. That was going to be determined by the market. So they wanted to raise 250,000 Ether, which is approximately $12.5 million. And the, the way that they were going to price the GNO tokens and decide how many were going to be sold was by um, starting off by selling some very small fraction of them, say like 100,000. These are not the actual numbers. This is just an example to help understand the model. But they were going to sell 100,000. And as new blocks came into the Ethereum blockchain, they were going to slowly increment the amount of GNO tokens that they were actually selling until 250,000 Ether had been raised. And then they were going to lock in the number of tokens and then divvy up um, the tokens equally based on the amount of ether that everybody that everybody distributed. So let's look through an example. So say you have, you know, 100,000 GNO tokens in the first block, and there's 100,000 ether contributed to the crowd sale. Well, they haven't reached their crowd sale goal, so it goes to the next block. And maybe there's 50,000 ether in that block. Well, they still haven't reached the crowd sale goal, so they go to the next block. Um, where there's going to be 300,000 GNO tokens distributed. Still haven't reached the goal. Finally, they go to the next block, and now there's been 250,000 Ether contributed. So they freeze right there. There's 400,000 GNO tokens distributed. And the way that this would work now is that the Gnosis team will retain 9.6 million of the GNO tokens, and 400,000 GNO tokens will be distributed based on the amount of Ether that people invested. And one thing that's good about this model is that everybody gets the GNO tokens at the same price. 
So you don't have this this situation which you had in the early bird token sales where people get actual tokens cheaper than other people. Everyone gets the same price. But if you look at the way that this situation would play out, in this case, the value of all GNO tokens would be $312 million because you're raising $12.5 million but only distributing 4% of all tokens. And that would be an insane valuation to have. So the, the, this is what I mean by the market determines the actual valuation because people could be a lot, you know, they could just wait. They could not contribute Ether till later. Maybe now this is up to 8.7 million tokens. Now it's up to 8.8 .8 million tokens given out in the crowd sale. But the Ether is just coming in slower and slower. And then maybe it gets to 9 million GNO tokens. And then finally the crowd sale goal has been reached. And in this scenario, only 1 million GNO tokens would be kept by the Gnosis team. 9 million GNO tokens would be distributed to the public. And the value of all GNO tokens would be 13.8 million, which is, you know, a lot more reasonable. But, but the big idea is that it would be the market itself that is deciding what the value is because people can just wait until they feel that the value is appropriate and then invest. And if you do that, you're you're incentiv you're not incentivized to actually put your ether in early because it's not going to matter. You're still going to get the the GNO tokens at the same valuation as anybody that puts it in later. So that was the idea here. Now now let's look at what actually happened. And of course, what actually happened was what has happened in every single ERC twenty token crowd sale, which is it sells out in ten minutes, regardless of dynamics, because just fuck it. There's no rules in cryptocurrency. People are crazy and have so much money and just fling it around. And what ended up happening is Gnosis sold four hundred seventeen thousand GNO tokens before this sold out, um, which means that the Gnosis team is retaining o over ninety five percent of all minted tokens. And even though the investors put in all the money, the investors put in $12.5 million, they're only getting like 4% of all the tokens, which is crazy. I, I mean, th this dynamic is insane. And this isn't going to be bad for any individual investor. I mean, if you bought some GNO tokens and you don't like the way that this crowd sale ended up, these are liquid assets. You can just sell them on exchanges and make your money back. It, it, it's more that it's bad for everyone. It's bad for the community. It's kind of like one of these tragedy of the commons problems where it's beneficial for everybody to just wait, to just let the auction run out until the valuation is more reasonable. But there's a short-term incentive if people think they can make a profit just hoarding these tokens and then selling them on exchanges because there's less supply, then there might be a short-term incentive for a few people to just buy up all the tokens regardless of price. So even though it's better for everybody to just wait, it's just the market dynamic doesn't work that way and people end up buying it. And now we're in this really bad situation where only 4% of the tokens have been distributed. And it's just not good for anyone. That's not to say that there is anything wrong with the Dutch auction format in general. I actually think it's pretty interesting. And it's been used before. I mean, like this is a common, a common thing in the world. Google famously IPO'd actually using a Dutch auction system similar to this. And I, if I recall correctly, there's a lot of controversy around that as, as well. But if you're gonna use a model like this, it seems like there were some like pretty basic things you could have done to have improved upon it. One example would just be starting, starting the valuation lower. So instead of starting with, you know, like, whatever the number was, a couple hundred thousand GNO tokens, it make the minimum a million tokens. So that way, at minimum, even if it sells out in 10 minutes, like at least 10% of all tokens are going to the public, or just some more reasonable number. Um, you could also do the exact opposite and just start insanely low. We're, we're to the point where like, if, if you're selling one GNO token in the first block, that, that's going to give the company more than a trillion dollar valuation. I mean, like that's more than we've spent on the Iraq war kind of thing. And, and it's like no one in like you'd have to be not only stupid, but clinically insane to try to buy the public GNO tokens when the valuation is that high. So they could start it just insanely high where, you know, nobody's going to buy it where like it'll have to let the market play out a little bit. And maybe that would lead to less of a frenzy. But, but there, there could have been ways to have mitigated the situation because they, now they're kind of in, the, in this half measure situation where it's like, I don't know, it's just it's not the greatest vibe. And, you know, it's frustrating because as a developer, like, I just want to build cool stuff. Like, I'm very interested in the Gnosis project.
I want to be able to build, you know, sports betting platforms on top of their liquidity market, it's something I've always wanted to make. And like, this is a great way to do it. And just, it's so frustrating that you have to have all these kind of financial dynamics, just like screwing up apps that you really want to work with and you really want to exist. And now there's going to be this label attached to Gnosis that's like, hey, didn't they, you know, fleece their investors and only sell 4% of their tokens when they could have, you know, been more reasonable. And that's going to just be a stigma attached to the project, which sucks because I like the project. I want the project to succeed. And it just seems unnecessary. But I guess it's like, that's what I deserve, right? Like, if you're trying to be noble and just build cool shit in cryptocurrency, I mean, you're in the wrong place. Like, there, the incentives in the space are just so ridiculous. The amount of money is so ridiculous. The lack of regulation is so ridiculous that, I, I mean, it's just the Wild West. So maybe I just need to learn to live with that. And as a developer, just somehow find a way to stay sane and build cool stuff when, you know, you know people are getting gunned down in the street around you. But but what's really interesting, so like I, I don't I want to end this on a really positive note because I'm actually very intrigued by what went down because I think that, that there's like a bigger thing here, which is like as society, we've just been wrong about funding technical ventures. Like, like there's something that we've just been missing. The, whatever you think of the Gnosis crowd sale or any of these kind of token sales, like they clearly work. Like right, right? Like you're clearly just building digital assets into your protocol or into whatever application you're making and selling them to the public as tradable, you know, assets works. Like people are raising money doing this and it, it, it's incredible. Like we've never seen anything like this before where companies can just make tradable assets inside their ecosystem, sell them to a global population and anybody around the world, regardless of even their anonymity can can participate in it. Um, it. It's incredible. And like you think about so many projects and products that we use that just don't have these kinds of incentive models built into them, like even package managers in software. Like if you look at something like NPM, which is, you know, a you know, tremendously important project to the JavaScript ecosystem, even if it's maybe falling out of favor a bit now, but 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 I mean like what if there was an incentive model baked into NPM? What if the developers that used it could could somehow incentivize its growth um, as opposed to just using it for free and getting all this value out of it. And that that's just such an interesting idea that even though this is clearly crazy, um, I think that there's there's kind of a bigger a bigger a bigger um, narrative with with these kind of token sales that is about to get very, very interesting. I mean, if you if you think about what the implication of this gnosis token sale is going to be the short-term implication is going to be a lot of people are going to hear about raising a million dollars in a minute and only giving away four percent of the tokens and just it's going to be a feeding frenzy for scammers and vaporware but and that that's going to be a short-term thing and i'm i'm kind of intrigued by that because i like looking at all the vaporware because normally it's pretty transparent and it's it's fun to kind of research um but but I think a lot of people are going to get gunned down in the street if they try to if they try to mess in this space without really knowing what they're doing. But what's going to be even cooler is down the road, once you have all the vaporware and scammers, you know, make their short term gains, the kind of longer term implications of these global crowd sales are it's going to be very interesting. I think that there, there's a really big um, there's a really big narrative that is emerging out of this that's really exciting to be around.